Ten-year-old Matthew Kirkpatrick spent the summer gaining independence, but a bout of COVID-19 at the start of the school year has stripped it all away. The doctors were saying nothing alone, no showering alone. You know, if he was trying to learn to cook, no cooking alone, um, you know, no no physical activities. Nancy Kirkpatrick says the life-limiting advice came after her son collapsed on his way home from school. There was this alleyway near my house and I passed out and then I just woke up. He had two more severe blackouts. One was at school where he just fell out of his desk. Matthew's post-COVID symptoms also included chest pain and dizziness. A cardiologist diagnosed him with tachycardia, a condition where the heartbeat races more than 100 times per minute. A new large-scale preprint study looked at more than 80,000 children with COVID. While cardiorespiratory post-COVID symptoms were more rare, it found one in four kids who had the virus developed some form of long COVID. The most common symptoms that we're seeing were mood symptoms, sleep disturbances, and fatigue. And these can be sort of um, really common symptoms after anybody recovers from a viral illness. But it is concerning that we saw those symptoms continue for at least a month after somebody had COVID. Claire Hasty's 13-year-old twins got COVID two years ago. They've been dealing with lingering fatigue, gastrointestinal issues, and extreme joint pain ever since. It's heartbreaking, all of the relapses, um, and symptoms have really made it difficult. There are a few answers, treatment can be limited, and prevention, vaccination, isn't available to everyone. Matthew Kirkpatrick wasn't eligible for a vaccine when he caught COVID in September. You know, I regret to this day putting him in school until he was vaccinated. A risk some families are still being forced to take as they wait for an approved vaccine for the youngest Canadians. Jamie Marocker, Global News, Toronto.